Hello everybody, today we're going to be painting this guy, his name is Fond, Shond, okay sorry, Shond Cleavehammer or whatever, he's from the God's War Hunt. Head cleaner? I don't know. He's, he's the guy with the, um, big old sword. It's one of the, uh, the grunts from the, uh, God's Sworn, so I'm basically painting him I don't know. He's kind of a god sworn, so it's chaosy. I'm gonna because they're very kind of bland. I find they're just like kind of white skin, kind of like everything's browns, just like very like Conan Barbarian, very bleak. So I'm gonna spice things up and try and make it a lot more colorful. Hopefully, in a more tasteful way than looking like an '80s or a '90s uh, windbreaker. So we'll see. I'm gonna go for like very dark skin, I think. Like a red. Not the usual, very pale. And see how it goes from there. Should be good. A lot of skin on this guy. Lots of scars. Should be fun. Alright. Just gonna start it off with some. This is. Cossite flush? And I'm gonna add a bit of a. Uh, this is well. I'm mean, off white base. Nice cream color. This is my foundation. I'm gonna go much darker after that. Even though this looks like a very white skin, it's gonna go darker. This is, this is my foundation. Cause I'm gonna do uh, two brush blending and add my shadows to it. So this is probably like, the lightest color I get. I might do a little lighter for some areas. Where like, the light really hits it, but just for this foundation, I'm just gonna go for. Where are the... I think I need to zoom in a little. Okay, he's a tiny little guy. Been doing a lot of big guys recently. All right, that's how about that? Is that good? Yeah, that's better. Remember, you have to wait for me to be able to see it. You can't ask me to Well, I can wait for you to for it to get there. So 
So I'm thinking of going for purples and maybe teals for this guy. Let's see. Depends on how the uh, skin turns out. I think of giving him like um, any kind of metal. So like the hilt and his arm plate is going to be like a, a very blackened kind of steel. So like very carbonized. Basically you think of like metal that's kind of being like beaten up and like a, like thrown in like a fireplace and got like all the carbon blackened soot and then the edges gonna be all like like chipped so it's about like really bright steel showing through and then the blade itself i'm thinking like a almost obsidian looking things so and like some like magical looking thing because like a gift from the gods or whatever whatever the god sword are He's got no pants, but he does have boots. <laughs> I mean, yes, he's got a loincloth. There's nothing wrong with his walk around in boots. You gotta keep protect your feet. You don't walk on your butt. You walk on your feet. Unless you're some kind of I don't know. What do they call it again? Street performers. Pants weren't exactly common back in the day. You get like tunics and things like that. You didn't need pants. Just one long dress shirt thing. It kind of covered all the uh, necessary bits. <laughs> I mean, the loincloth isn't really armored, so it's just like all it is is just like a vanity thing. The boots are actually necessary because no one wants to step on something sharp and, you know, get an infection because those are dangerous. But, you know, getting embarrassed because people can see your jiggly bits is a lot less dangerous. But he actually is wearing, like, a very skin tight, like, Speedo thing. And he's got a loincloth to cover up his front part. So. I mean, it's something. He definitely has some interesting hair. What kind of product he uses? Mud. Mud. No, I use mud. No, I use clay for mine. You know that clay is mud. I know. Well, it's... A clay is a type of mud. Not all mud is clay, but is all clay mud? one of those kind of questions. I'm trying to give a good foundation here. Let me starting a bunch of red and brown tones. Okay, while this is dry, I'm gonna go work on the base. What color do I want to do the base? Actually, let me just correct the, uh, my camera's colors right now. Just a little more saturation, maybe. Um, oh, that looks a little better, actually. I think that's about right. The exposure. No. That's good enough. Alright, so I'll do another coat of, of flesh, but I don't want to do it now because it will make it start looking chunky if I do it while it's drying. So let's do a base coat on the ground. Uh, let's make it gray. Let's make it like a weird greenish gray. It's underworld, right? It's probably like decaying and moldy and whatever. And then, I mean, I guess it all really depends. Is but, it though? Like, or is Underworld just something completely else? Well, it all depends on like the bases too, right? Because this guy's on like a, a very earthy, I mean, like, on, like a tree. 
Yeah, this one's got like a trunk on it, some bones. That is variety, but I've seen other ones like on like. I don't want to call you yet. Well, this one's got a skull too. Some, actually, there's two skulls hiding in the trunk here. It's like a squirrel that <laughs> hides skulls for later. But like, I've seen a lot of bases like this, different styles, right? Some are on like cobblestone, some are on like crypt-looking bases. I'm not, I'm not actually sure about the lore of like underworlds. So, if anybody could tell me, that'd be great. So I can help me with my inspiration for the uh, the color scheme on these guys. Because this is a commission, and I would like to get it somewhat right, but the client does say it doesn't really matter what he, as long as it looks good in the end. But I still like to make my pieces look good and also kind of fit in the theme of things. Because should I try to make him look like Thor Ragnarok, all like disco-y, very vibrant colors, give him like a, a red stripe down his eye, some war paint. I'm tempted to try and do war paint, but let's see how the skin goes first. Probably one of the later things. Okay. While this ground is drying, I'm gonna go get another coat. Another flesh coat. So I guess the God Sworn. I'm, I haven't played uh, Warhammer in a long time. I used to play Fantasy though before it was um, turned into Age of Sigmar. And so I guess that's the new God Sworn's new name for like the uh, barbarians, the uh, berserkers, whatever they used to be called. It's a nice name. It's almost like a fancy name. Like a there used to be like just like chafe. So now they actually have a more fluff, I guess. Not not just like. Chaos Warrior wannabes. But I don't actually know. So if I'm gonna just give me a little rundown on it'd be great. Maybe get some extra some what are they called? Toad toad points? Toad coins? They're called something. Yeah, they're called something. I might get some extra points for explaining. So I could help with my color choices on this guy. So this is also going to be a centerpiece model, so I'm not going to be really rushing or speed painting anything. Take my time. But there isn't really too much to this guy. He is like flesh and leather, which really is just... <laughs> and, flesh and well, fl flesh. Yes, flesh and flesh. Dead flesh and flesh. Okay, so he's going to go for like a Native American kind of style flesh, I'm thinking. Would definitely suit. Ah, well, this haircut would kind of kind of suits it, I think. All right, that's a decent base coat for the uh, skin. Well, that's drying. Oh, the base is still. Cause I want to get the base done first before I start working on the rest of him. Cause I don't want to like work on the base while he's done because it's much harder to f you know fix that than if I mess up the base while I'm working on the, the model actual center of attention because the base is just whatever right okay oh make sure those fingies are finger licking solid I'm gonna give the ground just a quick little dry brush with a semi-terrible brush. Let's make sure my brush is a little damp for this part so I don't have the paint instantly dry to it. But unfortunately, that means my brush has to be dried off a little bit. It can't be you know, bone dry, but it has to be a little damp. Let's try that. There we go. I'm 
make the floor look a little like undead, kind of nurgly, just to give the contrast. But I'm the very warm colors I'm gonna do up top. That might be cool. Make all the uh, the wood and the bone all like mossy and moldy and stuff like that. The rock. He has four skulls on his base. It's pretty good. Almost didn't notice them. Okay. So now I'm gonna start shitting the flesh. I'm gonna use some bloodstone for that. Start with some. Make sure both brushes I'm used for this one be nice and damp. So I don't ruin any brushes and Okay. My paint needs a little bit more moisture. It's a little too thick. Let's try that now. There we go. A little better. You want to pool to pool just a little, just slightly. And you're doing like this. And then I would give it at least some time to play around with this the clean brush. If it dries instantly, you're gonna get some bath ring effect, bathtub effect, which is not good. I'm doing this in stages. I'm doing one part at a time, and I'll go back and do right, two or three shades, but I'm not going to touch it while it's drying right now. I just don't have that long to play with it. Which is just fine by me. He's giving the reddish brown tones, which is what I'm looking for is bloodstone. There we go. Nice smooth gradient there. go back and do a little more highlighting once I've done this step, but that's fine. Because I kind of want the highlights to be, the extreme highlights to have like um, less saturation, because it's like reflecting the sun. Because right now these are getting very saturated by the bloodstone, which is exactly what I want. I want it darker, but more saturated. in his face so it isn't it's 
I don't want his face getting too dark. I'd rather do a, f a few small layers than rush it into one big fat thick coat, which may I mean, not have enough time to play around with the get it to shade properly. Okay. Well, that's the first layer, so hopefully by the time then the first, I can go back and start working on the parts already done. There we go. Now I can try and work on the anatomy more and kind of get it to curve with the uh, his overdeveloped muscles, you might say. So the first one I just do a general one to get the overall gradient, and then this one's more about defining the anatomy, picking out all those muscles. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I want to mess with that yet. The trick is not to touch it while it's drying. So I'll try not to touch that one side I just did. Just go back and do it later. And also make sure your brushes are clean. And reasonably damp. And also, the, the, one of the biggest things when you're doing two brush blending is make sure your the consistency of the paint is like perfect. Oh hey! Oh no, never mind. Thanks for the follow! How you doing? Uh, ooh, I'm gonna call you Murphy. I don't really want to mispronounce that first part. I'm pretty bad at mispronouncing names. How you doing? How you doing today, Murphy? It's just the, uh, I think it's the second pass of the Bloodstone Brown I'm doing. I'll get much better once I've done the, uh, like the darkest shade, which is probably be a combination of Bloodstone and maybe Sanguine. And then go up with the Extreme Highlight. This is just to get the, um, the muscles defined, basically. I'm actually trying to go from like a little less of like that drab kind of style because like it's not bad for like movies and stuff like that but like for a miniature I kind of like to give it a little more flair and give it more saturation and so I'm going to give him like maybe a bit more like like Thor Ragnarok kind of vibe I've been thinking so like splashes of color so I'm going to give him like the Native American skin the reddish skin tone and then any kind of metal, just like the hilt, and this part's gonna be like a blackish carboned kind of like metal with like all the edges and like chipped off and like very bright. And then this part would be like almost like a obsidian. So I'm thinking like a like very black with like the edges and all being like teal, kind of like kind of like magical kind of vibe. And then the leather, I'm gonna either gonna make it gray, like a very drab gray, like the straps, and then his cloth, I might make it like some ridiculous like purple or something like that. So, a little less, I don't know, realistic. Okay, I'm just trying to find where I can do some more. Blending. So, how are you guys doing today? You guys doing your own painting? You guys playing in 
playing some Underworlds. Okay, let's see if I can get this guy's temple properly. There we go. Just a lot of making sure my pigment and my paint is all right consistency. Too thin and it doesn't dry the way I want it to. Like I'll move it and move a pigment around and it'll look great and then I'll give leave it let it to dry and it'll just like start pooling in random places which is gonna look, ruin it. And too thick it starts drying too fast. So just have the perfect consistency. That's the uh, trick to this kind of method. So we always see my hand going over the camera. Because I'm adding water to my paint. The wet palette only, only do so much. Okay. I think... I know, I gotta finish up this back. And then I can do some deeper shading. And then go back and highlight them a bit more. I have kind of forsaken his lower bicep area right here. Kind of completely missed it. It's kind of blocked by his oversized sword. Okay. Let's see if we need to find that muscle. So, I think scars. Scars and that kind of flesh give like off like a pinky kind of tone. Like kind of like lighter and pink, aren't they? To look at that. Okay, for the neck, let's just darken this area. Make sure his collarbones are a little lighter. Make sure it's no hard edges. That's like the important part, most important part. Okay. So that's, that's the first pass of the uh, bloodstone. Just a just straight bloodstone, and then I'm going to go with the darker color. It's going to be a mix of uh, bloodstone and sanguine. I might add some green to it, just because I can. And nobody's going to stop me, right? Because the sanguine base is like a very red, purpley kind of tone. So actually I might just add more purple to it, depending how I feel. Um, yeah, let's add some more straight purple. This is going to be beaten purple. This is for the very darkest part of this model. That's, yeah. How does that look? Is that more purple? Because instead of adding black, I'm just going to change this, change the tone. And well, the, also the purple that I have is a little darker than my bloodstone, so let's try it. And since I'm doing just smaller mounts now, I'm going to use a smaller brush. Nice fine brush for this part. And just pick out some of these parts. Okay. Also, this... Got to make... Make sure the consistency is proper, too. There we go. Thin, but not too thin.
and also helps with the, the depth too because not only is it changing like the how dark it is it's also changing the color too so it just adds there's so much more depth to it And then I'm going to go back with, I think it's going to be Bloodstone and some Sanguine Base, or Menoth White. And just do like, like extreme highlighting, like with parts where the skin is like reflecting the sun. Because it's like, you know, he's sweaty. Uh, well, some kind of light source. And I'm expecting the light source to be kind of like orangey yellow, so... So I'm going to do the uh, the tone. Otherwise, if the skin, if the light source was like a blue, the red would be his skin tone would be much different because if I'm doing a red base skin tone, it wouldn't really show up that off. More of a grayish kind of tone, which is not a very pleasant skin tone. It look more of a zombie. But I'm kind of doing this it's El Natural for the most part. Does anybody here know the uh, like the fluff, the lore for uh, Underworlds? Be nice to know. You might even get some bonus points for it. If you could give me a little rundown. Let's get some more. There we go. Whoop. Okay. And darken this part right here. Just want to make sure those muscles are defined, especially darken the very crease, just to give them more pop. Just a bit more contrast is what I'm looking for. things look, make them look more interesting. Especially for darker skin tones, you kind of want more contrast anyway. Okay. I'm actually really liking this uh, skin tone. We'll have to go back and uh, readjust some of the highlights and blend it together a little better, but the overall effect is quite good. It's not ridiculous. It's pretty natural, actually. Which is what I'm looking for. I don't look like a... I don't know what. Some weird orange person from outer space or some like red actual red like a tomato but, you know something you'd say it actually looks like a human because well he is a human he's not some space tomato okay so let's so there's some parts I need to darken with the uh, bloodstone because the uh, my darker tone is just too dark obviously but I'm gonna lay save that for later because I'm gonna re-highlight some areas and I'll shade everything back together with the bloodstone and readjust some of the light and dark areas with the bloodstone okay but before I do that let's finish up the uh, with the darkest color my purple bloodstone mix
Yes. Make sure the inner part of the ear is nice and dark. There we go. That car alarm is not doing any favors, is it? Okay. Let's see if I can adjust my colors now. How's that looking? A little better? A little worse? Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And maybe move it up just a little bit more. Okay, let's try that. So let's just define his massive back muscles. And I'll do some highlighting. I'm gonna do some hard edges just where the, the shade would be the most. Help define those very well defined muscles. So make sure they stand out and pop. Because this guy definitely worked hard on his muscles. So I'm gonna show those muscles some love. Because this part needs definitely more love right here. Okay. So bloodstone, sorry not bloodstone, it's just mouth white and then bloodstone. Mouth white base actually, to be exact. And I'll probably add a little bit of flesh tone to it, um, calcite flesh. Yeah, because this needs a bit more pink to it. And I also need to lighten it up too for my brightest highlight. Um, that looks about right. Oh, my palette cam's a little off, isn't it? Okay. So let's just get some of this muscle defined a little better. I don't need. I'm gonna go for a little bigger brush. Or not bigger, but it's like a worse tip because I don't need it to be that. That and fine of a tip for this part. I want to go back to that really fine brush for the uh, face, though. He has a very fine face.
a little more fresh air in here. Okay. So let's before I start doing the face or any upper region, let's do the the lower parts. I'll go back to that little brush again. It'll help do this some fine blending. In this part right here, I'm just gonna overpaint a bit, and then I'm gonna go back with a, a lot of bloodstone because I did overshade it a bit there, and it should be a little, a little lighter. So I'm just gonna go back and over highlight to get the proper like tone. Now here's some delicate parts, so, so let me get it on camera for you. Yes, Slobs is uh, is working as attended today, which is nice. It's been working. It's been doing okay for actually a few days now, so I'm kind of happy about it. There's no complaints. Just that one day, it was just like it just we really didn't want to even try. So now you can see my somewhat face. Uh, I'm not gonna add any description to that. It's a face. Just like this guy's face. Is that a good angle? There we go. Let's see if we can get a proper face shot. And try not to make his face too bright. I find it happens a lot. So. I'm going to make him give him a little bit of forehead wrinkles and stuff. It's always good to add a little character. So how are you doing, Eeny? Or Eeny Minis? Work anything exciting? Okay. I think that's the most of the highlighting I'm done. Now let's do the extreme highlighting, which is going to be mostly just men off white. Okay, let's start low and work my way up. And just do very few points. way too much there. Oh, 
That's unfortunate, but sorry to hear about your eeny meeny. I'm sure she's Yes. I try not to do too long on my projects, like maybe two or three streams, so I just started this guy today. And I'll be working on my usual chibi next week. I think I'm gonna be doing some heroes, like uh, maybe a wolf rider next week. Should be fun. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm doing Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. I might do more. Do more if the demand is up, but apparently it's just to get. Uh, I don't know, people to watch, see if people like me, like my painting. Okay. It's a little past, or uh, yeah, pastel, a little chalky. But that's why I'm doing this right now before I, I do the um, the shade with like the middle mid tone bloodstone. So I'll then go back and resaturate some areas where I think it needs it. To maybe have a little bit of chalkiness in like the very extreme highlights, but for the most part I don't want it. You're doing are you doing the gladiator or is that somebody else? Am I Okay. What are you doing that uh, in me? Are you, are you watching kid are you painting? Can you do both? I don't know. I don't, I don't have a kid, so I can't. I don't know if it's uh, impossible to paint and have a kid. Or watch a kid. Work in anything exciting? <laughs> Murderous Ferret, eh? That's kind of cool. It's one of the mascots, I assume. <laughs> That's cool. Murder ferret does sound fun. You doing like a stripe pattern, like a like black and white stripes, basically. What team? What team has the ferret too? I'm actually, I don't know. Is it like sewer people? Whatever they're called. Or is it something else? It doesn't sound like a brewer thing. It sounds like a... Blue Marma Cobb thing. Okay, let's see. Yes, I know his face is very light compared to the rest of his body, and I... I'll definitely be fixing that. He needs to blow that foundation. Exactly. <laughs> Good call. Oh, oh, is it the the rat ratters guild? There's a ratters guild or rat catchers or whatever. It's probably mascot mascots not like a, a cat because well, cats the traditional rat catcher, isn't it? Or there's oh, really? Oh, yeah. in like Send him down the burrows. creepy. <laughs> that is actually a pretty good name for a, a ferret, Peppa. 
Are they spicy? If I'm told, they're kind of spicy. Like, as in, like, personality-wise, not, like, flavor. <laughs> they're, a, they're a bit of a handful. Yeah, let's do a little bit. I think I'm in the ferrets never again category. <laughs> <laughs> ferrets, are, ferrets are cute to look at, but not to have as a house guest. Really, you just want a good friend that has a ferret so you can go over and play with it from time to time? <laughs> Friends with ferret benefits. Let's see. This is the same way I feel about horses. <laughs> <laughs> You find a favorite horse, and you just see him once in a while. Not too often. Yeah, fun to go and visit. Not fun to do it every day. Yes. Just make sure his brow is light enough. You're kind of off camera. Sorry. You need to put the sticker down again. Well, okay, it's not the fact that I'm... It's not the fact that the thing is, like, in the... It's always in the right spot. It's just, like, is it too high or too low? That's because of the way that my cam angle is. So I'm going, I guess, and he goes off screen, and I go, I guess he's off screen, but I guess he's just fine. Let's fix this part. Yeah, same with foxes. Like, I love foxes. They look cute as hell, but apparently they're, uh, they're a little stanky. Same with skunks. Skunks are adorable. Like, baby skunks are like little angels. Unfortunately, they... You could not have either of those things here. <laughs> yes, in Canada, we cannot have those things as pets, unfortunately. They no, it's BC. It's provincial, not federal. Uh, okay. I was told. Okay. And then this that came in after like four tiger maulings in the same year. Oh my god, really? Tigers were actually pets? Oh my god. That just screams drug lord yeah, to me. Having, like, get large cats as pets. That just screams drug lord to me. Okay, let's do... Let's go back to the bloodstone. I mean, it's face-tastic. Let me go back to the bloodstone, and then we'll see how it works from there. And hopefully I'll be finished the skin. I don't know how I'm feeling about purple on that skin tone, though. Oh, it's gonna be glorious, don't worry about it. It's gonna be very glorious. I mean, there's so many varieties of purple. But I'm thinking I'll work on his, uh, his straps first, and see how I feel about the leather, the purple. The shade of purple. Just, it's actually going to do a little less straight bloodstone. This is more of a calcite flesh with bloodstone, so it's not too dark. There we go. Got to the proper consistency there. And then he's a little bit of muscle. I didn't realize that it kind of pops out here. I'll just lighten up some flesh. That's a knife. <laughs> no, it's a spoon, actually. It's a spoon. Oh, hey, how's it going, uh... Sentel... Intorn? Sentel Intorn. 
Hopefully that's the proper way of saying it. I've had some pretty da uh, pretty terrible pronunciations of people's names. Because You're getting better. Yes. Well, my favorite is still is Miss Half Damage. I pronounced M Shaft Damage. That was... Yeah, you're never living that one down. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the follow, Intorn. That's cool. As in, like, fantasy, like, Warhammer fantasy, or just, like, a fantasy, like, in general? Cause... Ah, yes. I'm going to assume that you're one of the older players who used to play when it was, uh, before Age of Sigmar, because I still call it, uh, Warhammer fantasy, basically. Free People Army? Is that Warhammer? It doesn't, I doesn't, I don't know if, is there, is there free people, people? Or is it free guilds? Oh, okay. Really? They had to change that again? <laughs> Not enough names. I mean, I'm really sad they got rid of, like, a lot of the, the old stuff. It was a really good world. <laughs> yes. The poor empire. At least they make cool models, right? Yes, they've they definitely. Well, I'm not a huge fan of like the dwarfs. There's like space fairs now. Like they were they had a pretty cool Viking theme v uh, vibe going on. Look how dark in his face. I don't want his face too bright. And I don't want to give him eyebrows. I just want to say he's he's one of those kind of people. What's Oh, we have samurai? I, is there some new models I haven't seen? Because I, I, I thought I was pretty up to date on them, like... Or is it like a proxy from a different uh, line? Yeah, it was like Nippon or some other kind of thing, but like, at least in the old lore, right? But there's no actual models for them. Or at least they had the, like the ogres, right? Uh, okay, yes. The only real samurai models I saw were like, uh, some like the, uh, oh, what are they called again? Man eaters from ogres? Which are kind of cool. They ex went and ventured many areas and ate many of man. Hmm, might be a little too dark in that recessed area. I'm just gonna keep him pink lips. I don't think he needs that like darker lips. It'll just do just fine. Ninjas, samurais, close enough to me. They're all the same. Actually, one of my favorite models was the pirate uh, many years. They were, they were pretty hilarious. I'm not as hilarious as like the the, the female uh, ogres dressed up as a man and the fig beard.
I was uh, actually doing an ogre army when uh, they switched over. I was green stuffing the hell out of them. And I was making like a a cast dwarf and uh, <laughs> I was making cast dwarf inspired ogre. So they all had like the um, the big curly beards and then face masks, like demon face masks. And then and then all the slaves or like the noblars, whatever they're called. Unfortunately, I kind of lost hope and, and sold most of it off. I have a few of them, but after the uh, Age of Sigmar hit, I was not pleased. But it's whatever. War Machine now is uh, very kind to me. It's a great game. Still not block-based combat, but. I guess nobody does that anymore. Maybe who's it again? Is it a Wrath of Kings? War? Kings of War. One of those two. Okay. So it's actually is quite like the skin tone. It's fairly easy to. Blend it together and look nice. Yeah, they, they made it. They made it more accessible, and then the people who went there because of the block format, because it was like historical and it, had, it was actually. The thing is about the block format. It's like no other game had it. Right? It was very unique. And so they wanted another big money earner like 40k because like Space Brains like sold more than all the fancy combined kind of thing, and then now they made very nice looking models but also very generic. It just feels like another Warhammer game instead of being like a quintessential like block formations, right? Because you'd have like um, historical people who'd like they didn't really care for the fantasy elements, so they just do Empire or Bretonians and like who need wizards. I mean, but then again, have you seen some of the units for, like, any of the, the games? <laughs> like, like they're still, like, really expensive models. And the, the monsters, which, I don't know if they're mandatory now or not, are still, like, ridiculously expensive. So, it's definitely not a, a poor man's game. And the, the block units were actually more cheaper than a lot of the other stuff, too. Like, remember, skeletons were pretty dirt cheap for, like, a 20-man box when they first came out. The older skeletons, not the new ones now. But like, same with like any kind of like Warhammer game. Those blocks, well, blocks are just units. That's like a hundred man unit squad. That's that's a lot. Even for me. Because, like... You know, so you could also go for, like... You know... You can go for, like, the elite... So, you didn't... If you wanted to have, like, a cheap army, you go for, like, elite ones. Like, Chaos was very good, because you could have, like... Chaos Warriors, Chaos Knights. And they just wrecked face. Did they have, like, giants where you need, like, seven models? What was that? Oh, well, og actually, ogres were like that. Ogres are actually quite cheap for the way. Yeah, you can have, like, slave ogres, or slave giants, which are kind of apparently worse than... I think they're worse. They had, like, like worse, like, rolling stats. Because they had different, um... Because when ogre or when giants attacked, they had random attacks. Like, jump up and down, smash and grab, etc., etc. And then the slave giants had, like, a slightly worse table. I think he had almost the same stats. Maybe he had lower leadership because they were slaves. And no one likes being slaves. <laughs> well, I had a goblin army, and I goblin army, and you just magpies them on the bait trays, and you just don't have to worry about that kind of stuff, which was very nice.
I miss those guys. In <laughs> yeah, I sold off all my. <laughs> I'm not saying it was a perfect game. I'm just saying, like, if you wanted a skirmish game, there was 40k. If you wanted melee in 40 in like a 40 in a skirmish type game, you could play like little chaos armies. If you wanted shooty, there was Tau, there was Space Marines. Like, it didn't have to become another skirmish game. Who knows, it's Games Workshop, I'm sure it'll swing back at some point. No, it's... Apparently, from what I've been told, it's like... They're, since they're almost the same rules, like Fantasy and 40k, they're basically testing a lot of the rules for 40k on Fantasy. So what I've heard is, like, uh, the command points in 40k are a little broken, like, a little too good sometimes, because, like, it's... How they do it is... Um, your whole army generates command points, and you can use as many as you want in a turn. And so you can basically have like one turn where you blow all your command points into a big, massive turn. But in Age of Sigmar, you get you, you generate command points every turn. So you do, you have you constantly have like supply of command points, but you can't blow all of them at once, kind of thing. So you don't have this one massive turn where it's with a giant swing, right? So if you deep strike into our army, then you have to spend a lot of command points. But then again, I don't play any of those games, so it's just hearsay for me. Yeah, so what I've been told is um, they're probably gonna like, change it so they're gonna use forty. The forty uh, k might be using Age of Sigmar command points. I'll probably never play like a mainstream kind of Warhammer game, but like, oh, definitely, I do like the look of uh, look again. The Shadespire. Yes, yeah, the Underworld games, because like. Having a couple really yeah, awesome really characters, cool. like like the Night Goblin ones, like, even the Troll ones, like they look great. And I like the ghosts <laughs> and the mushroom things. The trolls love mushrooms. Yeah, but as much as I don't like the rules for some Warhammer stuff, their models are always still it's making me gape. Because not only are they like very awesome looking models, but they're also like easy to put together, and the yeah, they're parted so well. The quality of the the plastic is also very good. All right, I think I think I'm gonna say I'm done for the skin. For the most part, and, and I might go back and touch it up after I've sealed a bit. But yeah, all right, let's work on some other parts now. Maybe a new palette. And wash all my brushes first and actually have a drink. Alright. Yeah, exactly. And like some of those command points are just like god awful and brutal, like the the what you spend on in 40k. Like if you're like some can make like certain things like do like rerolls or whatever and if your whole army is consist of this one thing then basically affects your entire army etc etc okay so this is about an hour in a hour and five ten minutes So let's see. Let's work on the straps. Turn this guy around so I have at least some open space for my palette. Yeah, from what I heard, Age of Sigmar is more of a, a constant stream instead of like one giant command explosion. To put it nicely, I guess. Um. So, actually, let's work on the base, because I want to get those base. Yes, my green dried out a little too much. So, let's just...
I'm going to get the base done first before I do any more else, because if I start working on the boots, etc., I'll probably ruin the boots when I'm doing up all the parts on the base. So, I prefer to get that done. Or at least do all the, uh, like, the, the gravel part. It's more important than doing, like, this, this part here where it's in front and not really close to the model. There we go. So. Kind of doing like a, almost like a nurgly kind of base, just to offset how warm this guy is. It'd be a nice, cool, rotting kind of base. Very green, very mellow colors, and he'll be like very warm and lively and vibrant. Give a nice contrast. Let's block in some of those straps before I do anything else. Um, actually, I'm going to cheat a bit. And I do, this is, what is this color? This is Crixbane Base? It's, instead of black, I'm going to use that. I'm just going to use that for the straps. Because I don't think, I don't want to go too dark. I don't want to have a pure black on this guy unless it's like a very deep shadow. So he's going to have a kind of a greenish tone strap. But when I highlight it, it's going to turn to a gray. I think I'm gonna do for the rest of you guys. I'm gonna do like different skin tones. So I might have this really pale one, maybe one that looks like a little purpley, because like it's chaos, right? So it could be whatever I, f whatever I feel like it really. Have one that's like Slaneshi or Zichi, give them a blue skin tone. Or her. There's actually a, I guess two females in that one. Not bad. There's like the sorceress lady, and then there's like the spear thrower. Okay. Well, it's kind of a terrible spot to have a strap. That sword really blocks everything. Let's see now. Okay, I think I've I've got it. And I'm basically gonna use the same colors as the base for this part. Mouth white mixed with this Crick's Bane base. For the first layer of highlighting. It's gonna be like very like worn leather, very just like scratched up. And that's the plan. Is that in focus? Is that, is that good? Let's see.
you guys paint anything? You guys just hanging out, watching? Or you guys working on your own models? Working on your own Shade Spire? Or if you guys have any questions too, if you want me to do an example of something, like doing gems or whatever, I can do that. That sounded pretty dreadful, I gotta say. Never had a broken bone before, and I'm pretty thankful. That's. I just can imagine walking around like that, or. Are you stuck in a wheelchair? Or worse, stuck in a wheelchair, because that's. Wee. What happened? How'd you hurt yourself? If you don't mind me asking. Kind of curious. Just hear the invasive question. Sorry. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to answer that, I'm just... My curiosity is peaked, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna ban you or kick you if you don't tell me. I'm not... I'm not that needy. We're just here to collect personal details from you. Yeah, and what's your... what's your... what street did you live on? Stuff like that. Oh. Thank you for sharing. That sounds terrible. Torn miscus. Is that like a... Is that like a tendon or a muscle? Ooh, yeah. I... <laughs> exactly. You must write me an essay about your life, and if you're interested enough, I'll let you watch me. That sounds... Between the bones and oh, ooh, it does sound pretty dreadful. It sounds like a sports injury, maybe. <laughs> now I'm just fishing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> this is this is way off topic. Sorry. Trying to get my straps to look okay. I'm being distracted. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. You could have just made up a good story, too. I was climbing Mount Everest, and then I fell a thousand feet and broke my miscus. I, would, I wouldn't have known. Uh, maybe... Want to add some pure white to that? Let's get it a pop more. Okay, just steal yourself for the fact that this was not the year to go to Everest. Well, yeah, it's apparently it's getting crowded there. It's well, this year there were like two clear days during the season, so like oh, yeah. I guess I bet you it's because of um, it's so like shitty weather that when actually it was good weather, everybody just like rushed to get up there and then. Traffic jam basically is what happened. It's been a heart attack and they couldn't get down because of. So it's just yeah, so they only issue so many permits for the entirety of the season. Oh, yeah. That just sounds. And this year there were like two days that it was good to go, so everyone tried to go during two days. 
That sounds dreadful. It's not my idea of a vacation, that's for sure. Yeah, I saw that line. Like, it was just ridiculous. It was like 30 or 40 or even, I don't know, maybe 60 people. I can't count. Um, it was like lined up. And also the trash, too, is pretty terrible. The connection point, like his feet. It's actually not too bad. I've had worse. I've had, like, oh my god, Malifaux Gremlins. <laughs> oh, man. Malifaux Gremlins just... You still haunt my nightmares. Because they're... They have these tiny little feet and the tiny little ankles. And they're... Uh, let's try the mosquitoes. Oh, mosquitoes. Oh, do I have a like mosquito pins. around? It's, like, attached by pins. You should get... If you gave me one of my, my Malifaux mosquitoes, I did. Oh, my god. His guy. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, model... You can send me a link to the, the model or even post a picture. Or link to... Of what you're doing, because I'd love to see what you're doing. We can swap models. You're, you're welcome to post your stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see Link. Okay, let's work on the metal now. Yeah, that's the one I was only one I have actually painted. Well, you painted some for other people. Oh, yeah. But I don't have other people, so... Here... This is a Skeeto. Look, look. So... This is a skill I did for a, like a while ago for my own self. Like, he is massive, but he's got such tiny little legs. And like, like he's supposed to go on like a thirty mil base too, which is the most. There you go. So, here's the base, and here's the mosquito. Like, thanks. Like, how do you do that? It's an awesome model, but like, oh my god, how do you, how do you do this? So, you know, I love this guy, but god. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Malifaux has a hold my beer for every connection point to build story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, let's look at your guy. Death's Torrent? Oh, the charging, uh... Oh, it's like on the tippy toes? On her, her tippy toes, I guess? Oh, man. I definitely have to pin, like, all the way up her ankle and stuff like that. What kind of base do you have that on? If it's a resin, you might have, like, if, might have a good long, like, solid chunk of resin you can put in. Otherwise, that's going to be, uh, a little hairy. A flying stem? I mean, if I pin stuff, I just use the uh, paper clips. Nice and cheap and easy to get. A flying stem. I, I, I just hate flying stems, no matter what company. They're just too brittle. They're long and snappy. And not in a good way. Okay, let's work on the metal parts. So I'm going to do like a... Okay, how do I do want to do it? Do I want to do black and then work my way up, or do I want to do dark, light, and work my way down? Okay, for the for the buckles, I'm going to do the uh, dark and work my way up, and then for the uh, the hilt and is this part, I'm going to do the opposite. It's because it's much easier access to get those parts, and it'll look much better, and they're more visible. Alright, so the buckles here. Let's call this guy R-Buckle. Still better name than Thond. Or was the name Shond? Shond. Yes. I might just paint him blonde because he's a blonde Shond. What's the miniature from anyway? It's like a it looks like an orc or a half orc kind of person. Is this a D and D miniature? Looks like a. Half work in like a gi with a samurai sword. T 
Titan Forge. Oh, okay. I don't. I never actually painted any of their models. I've done other like third world, third party stuff, but not on Hero Forge. But not Titan. Titan Forge. Remember that giant thing, the giant fire. The fire thing it went to Australia. It was like a fire. Oh, oh yeah, you know. Okay, I did it twice actually. <laughs> I I did. It was this giant um, like fire golem that was for like a chaos dwarf army. I did it one for a local guy, and somebody else loved it so much from Australia they wanted me to do exactly the same thing for him. Yeah, I forgot about that. that was that was okay, that was like years ago. That was like. Four or five years ago, though. It's just secretly my job to catalog everything you've painted. Well, your name is Cat, so it's in your name. Catalog. Okay. I think I specifically remember that because a lot of people asked where it came from. Nah, yeah, I remember that now, actually. There's a lot of people like, where is it from? Where is it from? Okay. Oh, okay, so... Is it... Is that a human, that the model you sent? The, the first picture? The one you're working on? Or is it a... It looks like a half-orc to me. Or is it wearing a mask or something like that? Cause, cause it just, the jaw structure and everything, the teeth. Must be a mask, then. Because they also like the... Because it's very Japanese, the... Uh, Whatever, so they got like the demon masks, the Ani masks, that the samurai wear, but it'd be a weird mashup having like a like a karate gi and then like a samurai mask. So yeah, very much different. But it's kinda hard to tell with that first picture. It's not a good angle to see the face. a much more complex buckle he has than what I thought it was going to be. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's like an Ani or yeah, ogre or Ani. Okay, that makes more sense. It's definitely not a gi, it's like a it's definitely an Ani or something like that. Or Oni, whatever they're called. It's definitely a not a great pose for basing. <laughs> I mean, in a way that made it a lot clearer what it is. Yeah. Like... Like, the one photo angle they should have taken, they didn't. Yes. The resin picture of him like, shows the face clearly, and unlike the painted one. Maybe they're hiding the terrible paint job on the face or something like that. Could be many reasons. Like, I don't see how you'd not pin that model. Unless maybe you had him, like, up against, like, a log. Like, he's charging past a log. Yeah. Always, like, charging, like, shoulder checking something. Which has got a much better foundation. You do stuff like that. I had a... I had um, a Dark Elder army 
Well, I had like maybe like five models of Dark Elder Army when I was younger, but I converted up a. Uh, what's it called again? It was discs, they think, like those flying. The Hellion kind of things? The, and I had him flying and, and the disc thing, the. whatever it's called, not a disc, like a. The Hellion, whatever pad he was riding on, he was cutting into a gene stealer. And so I had this gene stealer, like, like basically, like, get his throat cut off, getting decapitated, but, like, the whole gene stealer was, like, all pinned up, and he was, like, just really, like, wild pose of him, like, flying backwards, and that's basically how the, had the, uh, the Hellion thing attached to the base via gene stealer. It looked pretty cool. I was a terrible painter back then, though. So, unfortunately, it wasn't very good. Okay, I think it's all little pieces on this guy. Actually, no, wait. These stupid things. Okay. That's cool. I'm gonna go for traditional like Japanese thing, which is like cherry blossoms, everything. I find cork as a rock is like it's good for asphalt, but rock it's just a little too. It's almost like a. You have to paint it like um. What do you call it again? You have to paint it like um like volcanic rock. I think like the reddish kind of tone would be cool, but otherwise it doesn't feel like rock to me most the most part. Almost like the really chunky cork, like the not the the fine one, but the. Okay, let's do let's do a brown now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of rock is very smoothed up, especially if you're doing like a because like weather and s snow and wind and ice basically soften rock, so it's not you don't have to make rock too hard edged, make it look nice, or you have rock near a beach even. Very round. Rock is only really sharp when it's like, basically like, sh slate or whatever, and like, it breaks very easy, so it's very brittle. Um, let's add some... Oh, this is brown to be a little light. This is umbral umber I'm doing. But it's gonna look too dark when I have it based on black, so I'm gonna just add some white to it, so it's a little lighter. But then it loses its brown, so I'm going to add some more brown to it. Here we go. Let's try that. So I'm doing black, then I'm doing brown, then I'm gonna do silver. Give the the metal like a greasy carbon kind of look. That's cool. Um, it's hard to do like a cherry tree though in like a, a small base though. Are you just doing it for like... Okay, what game is this? Sorry. Is this um, Age of Sigmar? Like, and pro the problem is like the, the great thing about the block units, like the formations, you could have like the base fillers, right? You could have cool dioramas in between. Like I did have my night goblins. I did like raiding a village. And so I had a... A couple like like a f two by two which had like maybe two or three goblins on it and one of them was like holding up like a sheep like carrying away a sheep or like some like the loot they had on the base filler basically that's what i loved about warhammer six edition and before so many things you could do now it's cause there's no like block formations anymore there's no like movement trays which you can Customize. 
Unless I miss, unless I, I missed a memo somewhere. Oh, she's so doing a, like a display base. Uh, okay, like a like an army tray, basically. Okay, that's cool. That makes way more sense. I mean, I can see doing like cherry trees and like big monsters would be kind of cool. Have like a one of those long ass dragons, traditional kind of uh, Japanese. Is it Japanese or Chinese dragons that are very long and skinny? I'm not 100 percent. I think the Chinese dragons are like long, skinny ones. I'm not. I'm not. Okay, this is gonna be. This is rating platinum. I never used it before, so let's see if it works good for this. It's not the brightest silver I got because I don't want it to be. Let's see now. Kind of see what I'm, effect I'm going for. Okay. Let's see your link. Because so I know Malifaux has this really cool uh, looking like long dragon. Oh, that thing is... Wow. That's really impressive, actually. I actually quite like that a lot. It captures like the feel, like the authentic feel of uh, like the dragons, and look kind of sinister, not goofy looking, which I find like a lot of like the classical art of the Chinese dragons. It's a very good interpretation too. I like the uh, scale and the hair mix in between like the spine. That's actually kind of cool. I like that a lot. They did a great paint job too. Now that is actually very badass. It's a weird pose though in the first picture though. But that, yeah, that is. That is really cool. So that's and what. Not that expensive. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like fifty euros. So quite affordable, actually, for like a very much centerpiece of your army. Because like some like the greater demons are like one hundred and twenty bucks. But that thing's. I think is that is that. It's like resin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a good idea. Griffin dragon. It's the same kind of resin as the uh, Titan Forge, the, the big Infernal guy. It's actually quite good resin. I didn't have any problems with like only a few bubbles. I remember in like very weird it's spots. Kind of a slip, but... Yeah, the first one didn't though, so could have been a bad cast. And those do happen. But that's that's a pretty awesome. You should send me a picture of your when you get it fully painted. I'd love to see that thing. Love to see it in some better pose, like better angles. That's for sure. Because it's definitely not doing it any justice. I haven't used this silver before. It's called Radiant Platinum. And it's got a very brown tinge to it. It doesn't look very bright, but... But when I get on the model, it looks like it's very bright. I know it says... <laughs> the name says one thing, and it looks like another thing in the bottle, but... Damn, it's actually very bright.
the exact opposite of what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, like, if that's like a 50 by 100 base, that thing is going to be massive. Because, like, it overlaps it a lot, too. It just, like, hangs out and, like, it's looping around, too. <laughs> On top of the guy that's got the, the rider, too. So you got the samurai general on top. It'll definitely take a while. Are you going to use a... Oh, I forgot to do that part. Are you going to do airbrush? You thinking? Are you going to do it all by hand? Because as much as I don't like using airbrush for some things, definitely need it for that kind of massive model. This, if you want to do it relatively quickly. Because I did, um, if you guys saw my last uh, post, it was the um, Kingdom Death Dragon, Dragon King, and he's massive. He is like, I think he's taller than a foot. He's like, he's, he's godforsakenly big. He's pretty much all airbrush and ink, which saved a lot of time to get the texture down. It was not scaly, he's more got like stripes on him, so. Oh, that's cool. With all those uh, scales and inks, you definitely have to, it's like a must for that guy. You get them to pop. areas is so hard to not touch anything else. Okay. He's a little cheaty right here. I'm using the same kind of darker skin tone for the metal on this on this bracelet, but whatever. It looked much different once I had this silver. You can save a lot of time by adding similar colors or the same colors in your palette. No need to mix. Because once you add some highlights to it, it, it looks completely different. I might add some brown ink to some of these dark and that metal in some parts. Okay, I think that's all the buckles and straps and stuff. What kind of color scheme are you doing for your uh, army? What kind of dragon, for example? Are you doing like a blue dragon, green dragon, yellow dragon, red dragon? I think in the classical art for those guys, I've seen green, blue, and red dragons. I guess you can do whatever color you want. But it's like a very traditional looking one. Let's just block out this part. Give him a bit of a metal arm here. He's not futuristic. I don't want to give him a bionic arm. Or metal lips.
Okay. Is that flesh? No, it should have been flesh. Oh well, I'll have to go back and fix that. I guess I can fix that while it's metals drying. Is that overpaint or is it just I just missed that spot on the guy's wrist? Oh well. back and try and fix that skin spot I missed. Come along nicely. Add more bloodstone for that little armpit area I missed. Well, oh no, man down. Uh, now where did I put that? There we go. Nope. a little more calcite flesh. It's not too bright there. Maybe give him a little more lighter color on his elbow. There we go. It's always good to help pick out a little piece of anatomy. This goes a little, just goes so much farther. If I like to like add like a uh, little red, like make his nose, both people's nose a little red, eyes a little bit of blue or purple underneath it, what a red on like the knuckles or elbow joint space where the skin is thin the blood just pops out a little more so it gets I read a bit of a red hint to it or if it's cold we have like a bunch of you know people in snow add a bit of rosy cheeks stuff like that it really helps for a
That sounds cool. Red and yellow with black. Makes it feel like a wrong way. Red, black with, or is it black and yellow with a red banner? This is wash. So I'm gonna use some brown wash. Let's see if we can find it. Here we go. Oh, sorry. I'm. A little dyslexic sometime. Dyslexic. Alright, so this is just brown ink with a little bit of mixing medium. And then I just gonna apply it to the uh, to the metal I just did on the hilt and the shoulder pad. Whoop! Apparently I don't know where the table is today. And then I'm going to add some black to it. And I'll go back over the silver and add some scratch marks and stuff like that and battle damage. your uh, model. <laughs> they almost like character Jesus ones, so like bigger heads it feels like. But the unpainted ones look like kind of like creatures from the Dark Crystal, I gotta say. Skeksis almost. Pretty cool. Samurai's and Doppler kind of cool too. Very classic. Very well done. Those bases are massive, though. Like those giant cobblestones. <laughs> okay. So while that wash is working, it's magic. Let's do the base some more. tipped one add some brown to my green ink and then let's add some mixing medium and just darken it up making this weird vile kind of green color with the green and brown ink combination just kind of desaturate saturate each other there we go but this the green ink is much stronger, more vibrant than the brown. Okay, let's come and diluting it with the mixing medium. I'm also gonna add some brown ink to this too. Have a little spots of brown and and green. Make it a little more interesting. Let's do that. Let's do some. Kind of blend it together. It's like, let's see. It looks like the ground is all different hues. Not too saturated, because it looks too saturated. It looks. A little too cartoony. 
So let's do it a little less saturated. There we go. Yeah, they would be for Demi Griffins. Though I'm also a big fan of just Demi Griffins in general. They're a very cool and oh, very unexpected model, I gotta say. I didn't expect them to come out with those kind of things. But they did a great job, those guys. Let's clean off all my brushes. Um, ink's almost done. Let's see. Let's get some black. And find a spot where it's all dry, and then just just add the carbon basically to the, the metal. Okay, that's way too watered down. There we go. It's always gonna have the proper consistency, otherwise it never has the right effect. So I want to be mostly black with a hint of brown. And leave the edges silvery. And I'll go back with the silver and add the scuff marks and stuff like that. I think that's dry. Oh, it's still tacky. Whatever. This is trying to make like a very crude, kind of like fire blackened armor. The guys just seem like they're not like going to be very well skilled in blacksmithery, more like stealing their stuff. Or making their own weird, crude ways, so I'm just trying to show that off basically because that sword is not like it's made by a skilled blacksmith, it's all weird and warped. So, I'm trying to give them the same kind of vibe for the, uh, the t material and stuff like that. A little more black here. Okay. That's about right. Now let's add some scratch marks and damage around the hilt. We're basically all the carbon and oil and whatever has been scratched off so it exposes the, the bare metal so it's all nice and shiny. Basically the edge highlighting at this point.
and just a few extra scratches around the edges where it pretty much would be all scratched up the most. All right. That's basically it for today. Let me just actually darken this a little bit more. There we go. Add a bit more carbon and a little more battle damage, basically. Just make it a little more interesting looking. And always make sure you get a little extra damage in the corners, because the corners always get buffed or scratched up the most. Okay. So, here's what I got in two hours, basically. Mainly just the hair and the cloth left to do. I'll post pictures guy up on my social media in a little bit. I like how the face turned out. Alright, are we going to rate anybody or we're just going to... Okay. Thank you so much for watching guys and uh, thanks for the chat. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Might be a special stream tomorrow. Might have a special guest. Alright, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.